Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to St. Augustine of Canterbury's Healing Service. We're glad you're here today. Today we're celebrating the feast day of the Ascension, and that is the Ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to God. And we, we offer flowers today. So let us begin. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 93, which can be found in our Book of Common Prayer on page 722. We will say it together responsibly by half verse. The Lord is King. He has put on splendor, a splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Here ends the lesson. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scripture he had said to them. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power 
from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Yeah, you know, I can only imagine how difficult it must have been for the disciples to understand exactly what the power from on high was going to be and what exactly Jesus meant by that. There must have been a lot of confusion, and I, I can understand that. You know, it's been six Sundays now since we learned that Jesus was raised from the dead. And, you know, we've been through many of the stories that have now appeared to the disciples where Mary Magdalene found the tomb empty and then saw him in the garden but didn't recognize him at all. And then his followers later saw him on the road to Emmaus and they, they didn't, remember, they didn't recognize him at all either until he broke bread with them. And then Thomas wasn't sure until he actually touched the wounds of Jesus. And even though they all thought that Jesus was dead, they could still touch, hear, and see him. Today we are celebrating the Feast of the Ascension, and it actually takes place on Thursday. And it's interesting because between the Ascension and Pentecost, we are in what we like to call the in-between times. And it's a, it's a time where we, that we, we hear the disciples and, and we think about the disciples and, and how lost they must have felt. And I, and I can't help but to, to empathize with them right now, considering what we're going through. We're going through, I think, something very similar to what the disciples must have felt. A little uncertainty, a little fear, a little doubt. But we have to remember, and I've said this many times, we have to remember who we are and whose we are. And look at where Jesus takes the disciples. He takes his inner circle. He takes them to Bethany. That was just outside the city walls of Jerusalem, very close to where Mary and Martha lived. And that's, that's the place, remember, where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, from the grave. And you know, the, the name Bethany itself translates to something like house of affliction. House of affliction. It's where the poor and sick of Jerusalem were sent. There was a homeless shelter and probably a leper hospital. And it was built in such a way out of the way so that the visitors to Jerusalem would not see it or even realize that it was there. And Jesus takes his, his inner circle there and, and he, he reminds them of his message, the good news that he brings. And then he raises his hand and he blesses them. And then he leaves them. And they are left in the in-between times, just like we were are. You know, think about Jesus for a minute. He was a truth teller. He told the truth even when it was not popular, even when it went against, against what the officials were saying, even when it went against what others wanted to hear. And in a very real sense, Jesus was a disruptor of the status quo. You know, where in our lives today where in our government today, where in our church today, could we use a little disruption? But in reviewing the gospel for today, the Reverend Jason Cox, the rector of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in San Francisco, he said, after explaining where Jesus took his inner circle, he said that that's precisely where Jesus chose to spend most of his time. 
These are the people who Jesus chose to spend his time with. He poured out his life in love for them. And Bethany is the last place on earth Jesus chose to be seen among the poor and the suffering. And Jason goes on to say that this is the truth of the ascension, that Jesus went from that house of affliction into every place and time, carrying in his heart the cares and concerns of all the poor people of the world. And now he surrounds and infiltrates all times and all, all places with the beating heart of his truth, sometimes hidden just under the surface, but always there, if you're willing to face it. The truth that real love costs everything you have, and it's the only thing that really matters. That real truth costs everything you have. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain, and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God, of all comfort and our only help in time of need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to the soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. 
Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Savior, of the Savior, Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and for salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now I would ask you to... Since we cannot be together and I cannot lay hands upon you and anoint you with holy oil, I would ask you to, if you're with somebody, to put your hand on them. And if you are not with someone, to actually put your hand on yourself. And as I say the words, we're going to make the sign of the cross on our foreheads. And we are going to say this, I'm going to say the healing blessing. We offer ourselves, our souls, and bodies in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to sustain us with his very presence, to drive away all sickness of body, mind, and spirit, and to give us that victory over life and that peace that will enable us to serve him in this world and also in the world to come. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, my brother. Peace be with you. And now we'll let us say together the, the prayer that we like to say at our healing service. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may God the Father bless you. May God the Son heal you, and God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.